Greetings from April 2nd, 2021. I just posted two blog posts. They're kind of related. Uh, one is on grafting skinny scion wood like this, just like the little, you know, stuff that's just really scrawny. Maybe it's short and thin, under an eighth of an inch in diameter at the base. And the other one is on grafting sprouting wood. So like this has, you know, three buds on it that are showing green. A couple of them actually already have like leaf tips on them. And, you know, how do you deal with this stuff and strategize for better takes, higher survival rate? Now, these are not uncommon problems. If you graft at all, you're going to end up uh, facing these problems. I would say that this year I'll end up grafting dozens of scions that are sprouting out. Uh, in fact, I probably already have. You might find something late in the season that you want, but it's hard. the trees like this one behind me is already sprouting out. In fact, that scion I just cut that here to uh, just use as a demonstration. Certain genetics will sprout out early, especially if an apple has crab apple genetics. It will tend to push early maybe. It'll start to try to grow in the refrigerator uh, in spite of being cold, kept cold and in the dark. If uh, scions are transported to the male, they get warm and they might decide to wake up early and start to try to grow. You might just be busy and can't get to them early. You might forget about a bag and it's hiding under a bag of slimy uh, carrots in your crisper drawer and you find it later in like June and they're starting to sprout out and you still want to graft them. Uh, you might get skinny scion wood in trades. You might find an old overgrown tree like March Hedge up here at the top of the driveway where there just is no big growth. You know, it's just like these little skinny tips. They maybe grow for, you know, half an inch to uh, two inches long and you just got to deal with uh, grafting what you get. So I end up grafting a lot of this really skinny wood because I tend to sell all the nice scions. You know, I don't keep those for my personal use basically at all. Um, I sell all those and then I just have a bag of really scrawny little stuff that I use. Uh, for instance, these are the last three cherub scions of the season. I've grafted, probably when these are done, I'll have grafted about 26 new cherub trees, mostly with scion wood that looks like this. You know, I may get a slightly lower survival rate than I normally would, but you know, good chance I won't too and that it'll be perfectly fine. So regardless of what your actual situation is, you will run into these problems eventually. And again, they're just, they're not even uncommon. I deal with them basically every year. So this video is really a support video. Go read the blog posts for all the details. They'll be uh, more detailed and organized than this video. This is about strapping on the action cam to do some first person grafting, show you some of the graphs I would use on these things, and just a few talking points for uh, strategies for survival. So pretty much with any scion, uh, let alone really skinny little scions that dry out easily, you know, you just cut the base off and soak it in a half inch of water overnight, preferably in the fridge, and that'll just plump those guys right back up. And that's really helpful because obviously the main problem is whether they're going to lose too much water before the graft union heals and they start to get moisture from the stock. This is Cherub right here. And we're just going to add um, another scion right here for another side branch of it, just so I can get more fruit. But I can, once this grows out, I can also collect scion wood off of it. Okay, so what we have here is a small scion. What's the likelihood that we're going to have a twig this size to graft to? Uh, pretty unlikely, and it's not the graft we're going to want to make anyway. This is a more you know robust shoot right here. You can see the size difference is at least double. And this is more like what we want to be grafting onto. Well, that doesn't really present a problem if you just use the right graft. So I'm going to use a graft here that I've been using a lot, and I'm going to do it in its simplest form uh, here, and then maybe we'll do it in a more complex form later. So it basically involves taking just a strip off of this. You can see I've exposed the wood and cambium. Let's actually do this right. I'm trying to hold it up so you can see it, and it's kind of, kind of awkward. Okay, so nice and flat, just a flat cut. And then we can just measure this off so it's about the same, roughly. And we're just gonna take off a strip of this. Start small. This is a red fleshed crab variety. You can see the, you may see that the wood is actually red. It's extremely red, whatever it is. Okay, so that's a pretty good match. Now, if you wanna know how to match these two sizes of cuts, 
you can look at the wood that's showing, like how much cut wood there is, because the bark on this shoot is thicker than the bark on this shoot. So if you want to line the cambium layers up, look at the wood. Like how wide is the cut wood surface on this versus the cut wood surface on that? And these are about the same. So that's it. You can lay those up. If you can lash those together well, you've got a graft. It's easy to make it flat. Um, you don't have to make a slope cut, which is more difficult. There's no tongue, although you could put a tongue in this if you wanted to. Uh, but it's not really necessary if you wrap it well enough that it's not going to move. After one season's growth, you know, the tongue isn't going to be necessary. So because this graft is small and it doesn't need to be wrapped this tight, like it's going to be easy to, to secure this because it's short and small. I'm going to use this parafilm. I just started using parafilm this year. I finally got some, you know, people recommend it constantly. There's just like a lot of big fans out there. Um, but I see how easy that broke. I find that it breaks pretty easy and I like to wrap my graphs very tight. And so it's been a little bit of a pro see broke again, a little bit of a problem, but with these really small scions, it's really not like after you do your graft, grab this and wiggle it and you shouldn't see it move. Like maybe right up here in the very first couple of millimeters, you might see a slight bit of movement. That's not a big deal, but you should be able to go like this once the graft is starting to heal and it won't break because it can't move in there. Now, if you really work on it, you might be able to shift it around, but if you just do a wiggle test and it looks nice and solid, then you're good to go. So it's pretty obvious that a little stick like this just does not have that much of its own resources, right? And it's gonna dry out very fast. Things that cause drying are cuts like this on the end where water can leave more easily. Heat, obviously, especially direct sun. Wind, if you're in an area that's very windy, the scions will dry out much faster. And I think I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but that's, you know, that kind of stuff is gonna dry your scions out. So I'm gonna paint this completely with this grafting paint. This is what I usually use. A lot of people will take this um, parafilm and just wrap it all the way around the scion. Uh, I've, I keep forgetting to try that because I'm just not a parafilm user. Um, but this is fine. It looks really thick, but these buds will bust right through there. You may also notice that this is not yellow. This is Doc Farwell's, but it's the heel and seal compound, which as far as I can tell, functionally, it seems the same as the yellow grafting seal. It's just a different color. If there's any difference, I don't know what it is, but I've been using this all this season and it seems fine. So I wouldn't worry about it uh, if you can't find. The problem is I like the yellow better because you can see the, the old graft unions more easily. You see this, that's like three years old and you can still see that. Look at all this yellow paint and that'll be there for years. Uh, so will this but you just can't, it doesn't show up quite as well. So I would prefer the yellow stuff, but they don't sell it in quartz anymore for some reason. And a gallon is like 75 bucks or, or something like that. But whatever you do, um, you know, it's good insurance to seal this up because it's going to be a while before this union heals. I mean, in this kind of weather, it's in the 70s, it could go pretty fast. It could start receiving some moisture from the, the stock pretty soon. But, you know, anymore, I just pretty much seal everything up uh, just in case. Okay, I'm not going to shade this because I'm pretty sure it's going to survive, but you can do things like uh, tie a paper bag around the graft. Uh, some people, I've never used it, but some people use tin foil, so they'll just kind of loosely wrap a, a piece of tin foil around the whole thing to reflect the rays of the sun. You know, anything you can do to get some shade is probably going to help uh, ensure the survival of the graft. So this tree is for housing uh, promising seedlings from my breeding trials. So when I identify something in the trial rows and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I want to eat this more. I want to fruit it out in the sun on a real tree that has enough resources to grow, you know, really good fruit. It's going to get enough light and all that stuff. I put it onto this tree for further observation. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff uh, that's flowering this year. This is a cherub uh, scion already, but I just want more cherub. I want more scions, I want more fruit. You know, out of the stuff so far and the stuff I released, I think this one has probably the most chance of having real staying power in terms of being a known variety and widely propagated. We'll see. 
So in this case, what I want to do is find a nice stub and graft these two scions into it. And I've already filled up several branches over there, so I think I'm going to come back right here and see if we can fit them into this stub here. Now in terms of size, that's about as small as I like to go when I'm bark grafting. Um, you just want to make sure that it fits well and it's, it's actually working. But if you get too small, you're going to want to go to some other kind of graft. Now I could use a different graft on there. I could use the one I just showed you on the other tree and put these like uh, on the side here, like these side lap grafts. Um, I could do a side whip and tongue where it's just like laid on the outside here. But in this case, with a stub about this big or a little bigger and up, I'm going to want to do a bark graft. Now, bark grafts are great for skinny scions. They just work really well. The scion is small, so it slips under the bark without any trouble or without making a bunch of uh, space under the bark. And uh, yeah, they just work good. I'm going to go either side here, just a little lower than half, and just gently pry the bark up. This only works when the bark is slipping in the spring or summer, whenever it's slipping. And then the simplest version of this is I'm basically just going to cut a long slope here. Make sure it's nice and flat. At least take a little off the back here to make kind of a, a stubbier, stronger chisel like that. And that's good enough. I'm just going to slip that under one side of that cut. Make sure that the scion, the cut face of the scion is touching the wood. There's no reason to do anything fancier than that. That's, that's fine, especially for little skinny scions like this. You can take a little bit off the back and expose some of the cambium. But with really small stuff like this, I usually don't do that. Okay, so that's it. Very simple. This is one of the easiest grafts to do. So if you have skinny scions and you're not super experienced with grafting and you're concerned about it, this is really a great one because all you have to make is one flat cut on one side and you're good. So this graft I'm going to wrap with my usual, which is this budding tape, because I know this stuff I can get tight real easy. So I'll just get it started and then I'm going to pull it and stretch it real good. Okay, I've already wrapped that three times. I mean, that is rock solid, rock solid. And probably the parafilm probably seals this better than the grafting wax. This is basically just thick latex paint. It's not 100% seal, but it certainly seems to help a lot. So here is a graft I did like that, you know, a stub bark graft with two scions, just like we put in over there. It just heals this over quicker. So you can see that there's really maybe just a tiny bit of uh, bare wood showing from this stub cut that was, you know, bigger than the one we just did. So this was probably closer to three quarters of an inch in diameter. So that's already healed up in one year and I could just take one of these off and, um, you know, that cut will heal up super fast and, you know, we're done. So the other reason is that sometimes if you put a scion on only one side, the other side of the stalk will si decide to kind of start dying back. It's almost like it doesn't have a reason to grow. It doesn't have any reason to funnel resources in there. And it thinks it's just a dead stub. And so it'll start to die back on one side. And that's really bad news. Um, and it's also insurance, you know. So there's, there's three good reasons to do two grafts in even a small bark graft like this. Although it probably isn't necessary when you're like three quarters inch and down. Usually it isn't. So if you only have one scion, They'll feel like you absolutely have to put into, but if you have extra wood, it's not a bad idea. So now I could cut this off, but I'm not going to because this is 
Hmm, Rubiot, Rubinet, Red Flesh, nice looking, a little thin tasting. Okay, I, I think I know which one that is. So this has fruit wood on it, and I'm gonna get like three fruits off this and two fruits off this, and I just don't wanna cut those yet. So I'm gonna leave both of those on. But you can see here with this black strawberry scion, there was another one here that was almost as long. I already cut that off. This will heal over this year, and then this will be completely healed. Okay, let's see what else we have in here, because I have a stock right here. Here's hard candy cider. Okay, these are tiny. This is a perfect example. So here's what I have left of hard candy cider. So this is a, a Grenadine Lady Williams cross that just has a crazy intense uh, flavor of mixed hard fruit candies. So in America here, we have a brand called Jolly Rancher, which is just like these little hard candies that taste like different fruits. Well, this one tastes like a bunch of those mixed together. The most prominent flavors are grape, like purple grape and watermelon, but uh, there's more going on in there. It's really an interesting flavored apple, but it's actually more of a cider apple. It's a little bit bitter, uh, pretty interesting. So I want more of these. And this is what I have. Uh, this scion has kind of like a weird looking overdeveloped bud here that's maybe tending more toward a fruit bud. I don't think it is a fruit bud yet. A very small bud here and then a smallish bud here that's already starting to stretch out. This one is more like the type of one year growth scion wood that you would normally use for grafting, but it's obviously just really tiny. Now I'm just gonna pick the one that matches this stock the best, which is the smaller one. And I don't know what these are. They're probably three thirty seconds. They might be close to an eighth of an inch. And we're going to do whip and tongue on this. Come down here a little further. It's pretty good match. I'm just going to make this one a little bit longer. Make sure it's nice and flat. If your cuts are not flat and you keep whittling at different angles, you'll end up with like high spots on the wood. And then when you try to put the two pieces together, the gaps won't close up in the, the union of the two pieces. Okay, so I'm just gonna make that very gently and we should have that together. So you probably noticed I supported this on my finger here when I made this cut. You really kind of need to do that. And also when I make this cut, I'm not just pushing on it. I'm, I'm pulling the knife and slicing it like that. And that's gonna give you way more control and it's a lot safer because you don't have to just keep pushing and pushing until it moves. You just kind of keep sliding the knife and uh, add like a little bit of pressure and it'll start to slowly cut. So control, that's what it's all about. I do like the parafilm for wrapping these little scions quite a bit because they don't require as much pressure And I've gotten better at using this parafoam without breaking it, but I still break it a lot and uh, it's kind of frustrating. Again, wiggle test. The, none of this is moving. None of this joint's moving. It's moving like down here, so we're good. We're gonna label this with some hard looking font. Label everything. Without a label, it's useless. I don't know what it is. I'll forget. And this is the uh, rootstock that it's grafted onto, which is a seedling rootstock of, in this case, Pomos and Allen Lady Williams. You know, I cut this Pomos and Allen Lady Williams cross off earlier this year, and I grafted it onto another foundation tree, so hopefully it'll fruit faster. But if that scion on the other tree dies, I can come back here, cut this off below the graft union, regrow that, and then regraft it later. So I have about a year until these trees are moved out to uh, do that. I think that's pretty clever, but I'm biased. 
These um, scions will probably make it without shade. A lot of my beds are unshaded because I don't have enough shade cloth. But if you have it or some other way to shade, that's a good idea. Okay, so this holding tree for my apple varieties does not have hard candy cider on it yet. We're gonna do um, this. Let's just trim this back. In fact, I take that off. And I'm gonna take this off all the way back. So that's going to drive a lot more growth now that this is more isolated. In fact, I'm even going to take... I might want to graft onto this one later. But hopefully removing some of that competition from this area will drive more growth into my new scions here. Okay, just to try it and show you, I'll do a fancier version of the graft I showed earlier. Now, one thing I usually do a lot with this situation is a side whip and tongue. So in that case, I'll cut, um, you know, like similar to a usual whip and tongue cut here, except it'll kind of just end right there instead of being like an oval, it'll be more like a U. And then you cut this to match and just put it out on the side. And so you end up with a whip and tongue graft, but out on the side of a larger piece. I can show you one of those that's healed up. Okay, so here's a side whip and tongue that's one year old. And, you know, this was pretty small when I put it onto this stub. Like, this stub probably didn't grow much, but this grew a lot. So now they look like they're closer to a similar size, but this was probably, um, you know, much smaller. This cut end of wood is completely healed up, and this is a very strong graft. Here's another one right here. You can see, like, the, the cut here and how different they were in size when this was grafted. It's a really good graft for this situation, but I kind of have been favoring this other graft I've been doing, which for, since I don't know what this graft is usually called, I'm sure it's, it's used and it's called something. I just call it a uh, side lap. So I cut this off at a slight angle so that it's a little bit chisel shaped, you know, maybe just like 10 degrees or 15 degrees or something. And I'm gonna decide where I want this. I'm gonna cut this cut at an angle, like in this way, like down, like that. Close, maybe close to halfway. And then I'm gonna cut this flat. And you can actually just kind of peel that off and like, like uh, split it off. Because you're not cutting across the grain really, you're sort of just cutting with the grain. So the main thing is that you get this nice and flat. And look at it from the side and just check that it looks clean. I need to take a little more, a little more off here. Yeah, that looks flat and clean. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut this end to like a slight chisel. like that. Hopefully you can see that, but th that ends a chisel and this end goes in like a like a negative chisel. So this end cut slope here fits the stub that I cut off at an angle. And then I'm going to put my knife on the end here, come back a couple of millimeters and cut this end at an angle and then strip off a piece of bark right here. And I just want to show, again, about the same amount of wood width on this and this. Because this bark is a lot thicker than the bark on that. So don't look at the bark, look at the wood. That's just an easy way to kind of judge how deep to cut this stub cut here. Okay, that looks good. So now when I fit these together, this chisel goes in there and this chisel fits on the end. But we're gonna do one more thing because it's kind of loose and this doesn't go as deep as it needs to go. It needs to go like another half a millimeter or something. So I'm gonna take the knife and just gently split this about one or two millimeters. Just a split like that. So now when I fit these together, I can, I'll hit that cut, push it in a little more, and it actually will stick and wedge underneath this a little bit. 
just enough to kind of hold it in place while you wrap it. Pretty neat. I think I could probably make, um, you know, if I wasn't explaining this, it'd be faster, but I can probably make a whip and tongue graft a little bit quicker than this graft. But I really like this graft. It's very clean. Both of the pieces can be made to fit exactly, whereas if you do a side whip and tongue, you have like this uh, cut part of the scion hanging over the edge because they don't really quite match. One's a U and one's an oval, basically. You can also make this as long as you want. So for some weird reason, you want to make this graft all the way down to here. You get more cambial contact, um, so there's more chances for it to heal and deliver nutrients to the scion quicker. There's contact, you know, almost all the way around. It's a cool graft. I really like it and I, I've used it. I use that mostly to put about 90 grafts on a foundation tree this year. Probably 80 plus percent of the grafts are, are some version of this. Again, I showed you earlier like a real simple version, which is really, honestly, it's good enough. And if you want to get fancy, you can do it, you know, this way with the the angled ends and again i don't know what that's called um, i'm sure it has a traditional name somewhere but you know names are what they are like it, if it's called something in one place it's called something else in a different place so who really cares so for anything that i'm growing where i'm going to do a lot of assessing i've gone to these larger tags because i can write a lot of information on these tags i taste an apple or note something about its growth like it blooms early the leaves are red qualities of the fruit qualities of the growth i can just jot those down on these big tags and they're you know permanently there where i actually need them so if i'm in the field i'm walking along i'm like oh i, I noted this about this apple earlier i don't have to go back to my computer and uh, try to look the thing up hard and of course hard candy cider is a play on hard cider and if you use any kind of aluminum tags try to twist the wire really tight around here so that it can't wobble or it will wear this hole bigger and bigger until the tag just falls off trust me been there done that when I'm frame working, I'll wrap the wire first around the stub that I'm labeling. So this is chair about here. And then I double it back and wrap it around the trunk so the, the thing can't fall off until this grows out and grows some branches. Same here, just put in a couple of twists there and then come back around the main stem once. And this one is starting to push. You know, it could be within a few days, this would start showing a little green, could happen. So I'm gonna coat that too. But I probably get away with not coating it. Hard to say. So let's just have a look at this scion. I just cut this off of the uh, bite me tree because it has a few sprouting buds and it's just a good example to talk about uh, sprouting scions. So worst case scenario is that all your buds on a scion that you have look like this. You know, they look green. This has a green tip here. This one has like actual leaf tips on it. This one is showing green at the tip. And if they're all like that, what you wanna do is pick all of them off except for one or two of the least worst. So in this case, that would be this one and this one here. I would definitely remove that one and then, um, you know, graft it out. It's okay to leave a really long scion, just take some of the buds off. But usually I will cut it at the uh, lowest good bud that's not opening. So what I would really do with this piece, since some of it's sprouting and some of it isn't, is this is dormant, that's quite dormant, this is fairly dormant, but this one and this one are very grown out. So I'm gonna pick those off just like that. And I don't really want to leave this stub out here. It may be okay, I don't know, but I'm gonna cut down to this bud here. Now in this case, that bud's actually showing a little green too. While these two are very dormant, I don't need more than two buds, so I'm gonna take this down to there. This cyan is completely fine. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this or no reason that it shouldn't take. These are quite dormant. They weren't planning on busting out anytime too soon. So if you have a situation like this, it's just no problem. Like this isn't even really challenging. Where it gets challenging is if all the buds are showing green. And again, you just go with the, the least number of the least worst buds. 
and then just paint over the entire scion with grafting seal or wrap it with parafilm or whatever else you want to do to uh, try to seal it up to prevent it from losing moisture too quickly because those buds that are starting to push are going to come out pretty fast and whenever you start to get any kind of leaf surface that's going to lose moisture quickly and it'll just suck the the scion dry of moisture until that graft union heals and it gets out of that vulnerable stage where it's not receiving anything new like if it just starts to heal a little bit it'll start to pick up some moisture but that still has to keep up with how much it's losing so if you have all these buds and they sprout out too quick you'll just uh, desiccate the scion so let's go look at some i did that were pushing um, maybe it's about eight days ago i think i grafted these and we'll uh, see how they're doing Okay, so most of these scions you he see here that are green were pushing a little bit. This one is pushed out of the paint that I put over it and it's starting to sprout. This one has green leaves on it. This bud's pushing out. That one's still dormant. So let's say I was worried about this um, growing too fast and getting dried out. I could just take that off like that. This is still dormant. That's just busting out. That'll give it just that little bit more time to uh, heal before it starts to lose moisture too quickly. But I think this is probably even in eight days already receiving some uh, moisture and nutrients from the stock. So you can see like this one was completely sealed up and mummified and it's just starting to poke out right there. Um, most of these look pretty good. You can see spots on some of them like right here where I removed a bud that was sprouting out. This one right here is pushing out right at the end there and this one on the tip is actually growing quite a bit but I'm just going to leave those. I think they're totally fine and those should be good. And these were you know sent to me by uh, Chris Homanix and he said you should get that package as soon as possible get in there and, and look for sprouting scions because he thought some of the varieties some of which he named like these varieties would be sprouting out and he was right and my mail carrier quit so she didn't leave the package in the usual lockbox, and it got sent back to the post office and it sat there for four or five days in a heated warehouse um, so you know it was an issue here's this one here is pushing all of these buds are pushing that one's already sprouted out a little bit but again i'm not really worried i think these are totally fine and i'm just going to let them grow and they'll probably be a hundred percent success rate on these so as you can see uh grafting these skinny and sprouting scions is not a death sentence and in fact it's kind of standard fare for a lot of experienced grafters you may get a lower success rate, but you're, you know, more like 10, 15% than 20, 30, 40, 50% lower. Um, they're just not that big of a deal. So don't hesitate to graph them, uh, trade them, etc. Go check out the blog post, which I'll link in all the usual places here. And uh, we're probably doing more grafting videos in the next couple of years, and they should get funner, I think. So stay tuned.